Hi, I'm Eric. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how shutters work and what uh, auto FP means and flash synchronization, front curtain, rear curtain sync. So let's imagine this uh, gray box here is our sensor and that notepad represents our uh, shutters, our front and rear curtain shutters. And so uh, when you take a picture, let's pretend our exposure is set to one tenth of a second. When you take a picture, the front curtain is going to open, exposing the sensor to light, and then we're going to wait one tenth of a second, and then the rear curtain is going to close behind it. Now with the uh, with the front curtain sync, the front curtain is going to open, the flash will fire immediately right after it's open, and then we'll wait our one tenth of a second, and then the rear rear curtain will close behind it. With uh, rear curtain synchronization, our front curtain opens, we wait our one-tenth of a second, and then afterwards the flash fires and the curtain closes. Now it doesn't sound like it makes much of a difference, but let me show you what the uh, front curtain flash looks like with a moving object going through the frame. So here you see uh, the motorcycle is stopped in its tracks, but after the flash goes off, the motorcycle keeps moving while we wait our one-tenth of a second, and that uh, causes the taillights to streak through the image. So with rear curtain, the flash fires afterwards, and you get a picture that looks more like that, which is what we want. So uh, I don't know why that's not the default, probably just by convention, but that's the way it is. Now um, the maximum synchronization doesn't affect just pictures with the flash, it also affects pictures without the flash. So what that maximum flash sync speed means is the shortest amount of time that the entire image can be exposed as a whole before the rear curtain has to start moving. And so if we go above that, say we shoot at 1 8,000th of a second and our max sync speed is 1 250th, the way that it achieves that uh, shorter amount of light is it exposes a slight slight area of the sensor to light before the rear curtain starts chasing the front curtain and the rear curtain chases the front curtain all the way through to the end and then closes the rest of the way. Now that that uh, process takes 1 250th of a second because that's as fast as our little blades can move. Um, what happens I can demonstrate. Uh, here's a picture of a fan blade that I taped a piece of white paper to. This fan blade is not moving in this picture. In the next picture, this is what the fan blade looks like if I took a picture of it with one two hundredth of a second exposure. Now, remember I was saying that uh, if we go faster than the flash sync, it has to, the rear curtain has to start chasing the front curtain before um, the whole image is exposed. Well, that causes distortion for something that's moving very fast, like wheels or spokes or fans or propellers. And so you see, we still have motion blur even at one eight thousandth of a second. But more than that, we also have bending. It makes it look like uh, this piece of paper was bent. And the faster it's moving, the more pronounced that's going to be. And also the, uh, the bigger the image. This is a small crop of uh, the entire image. But... Uh, so the only way to effectively freeze fast-moving objects is uh, to use a flash, because a flash, when it fires, it fires a very short burst of light. And if that flash is the only source of light, then then uh, the exposure will effectively be as long as the flash is exposing it, not as long as the shutter is open, because if the shutter is open catching blackness, the flash fires for uh, 660th of a second, or 660,000th of a second, then the exposure will only be as long as the flash. So let me uh, give you a demonstration. So this is the camera was set to 160th of a second. The aperture, or the iris, was wide open so that we were as, as sensitive to light as we can be. So the flash fires relatively weak because I was pretty close. And a uh, weak flash is achieved by using a flash of a very short duration. A strong flash uses a flash of a longer duration. So if you want to see what uh, 
what a more powerful flash would look like. Or not a more powerful flash, but a more powerful setting of the flash. This is the same exposure in the camera, but the the flash, the aperture was stopped down so that the flash needed to be more powerful. And uh, I believe the maximum duration on my flash is one nine hundredth of a second. The minimum duration is really high, like one one hundred thousandth of a second. Um, now, when you try and uh, force your flash faster than its maximum synchronization speed, what ends up happening is we, c we can never... When we fire the flash normally at 1 250th of a second, what happens is the front curtain opens, the flash fires, and the rear curtain closes immediately right behind it. Now if we want to go faster than that, remember the blades can't move any quicker. That's the, that's the shortest amount of time that we can have the whole sensor exposed to light at one time. So, say I set my auto FP to 1 8,000th of a second. That means the rear curtain starts chasing the front curtain, and we need to start firing the flash now, otherwise only part of the image is going to be exposed to light. So we're, we're firing the flash, and we need to keep firing the flash, and keep firing the flash, and keep firing the flash until we get all the way through and then the rear curtain's closed and then we can stop. Now remember, the, fa the quickest it goes is uh, 1 250th of a second which means we need to keep firing the flash for 1 250th of a second. And also remember that the uh, longest duration that my flash natively goes is 1 900th of a second which means for the flash to, to keep firing this long it uses tons and tons of power and uh, that means that our flash can't uh, can't be as bright as it would normally be, which means the flash isn't as powerful. It uses tons and tons of battery, like four times as much energy when you start uh, making it exposed for longer amounts of time. Now, say you um, say you have the the shutter speed set to one three hundredth, which is only a little bit more. So that means the shutter the front curtain fires, and then it gets almost all the way. And then the flash has to stay on from here to here, which is a, sh a little bit longer than normal, but it's pretty short. And then the rear curtain closes. So the higher you increase the uh, the shutter speed, the longer the flash needs to fire, and the less powerful it becomes. So that's why your flash sync speed is important. Now, if um, if there's not enough light in the room to expose the object, then it doesn't really matter. Like we can have, like I said the camera set to one quarter second exposure, the flash is only going to fire for a sixtieth six hundred or sixty thousandth of a second stopping our motion. So that's good. Now some cameras that uh, have an electronic shutter, which means um, it works something like this. The uh, the front curtain opens and then the CCD turns off. And so you don't have that delay. And so the flash doesn't have to fire for two one two hundred fiftieth of a second. The flash can fire for a split second, and the rear curtain there is no rear curtain because it just cuts off the uh, the power to the sensor. And so I guess in that way they have a little bit of an advantage over the more expensive cameras. Um, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Thanks. Bye.